Welcome to this video where we're going to be doing uh, camera tracking on a drone footage. Uh, this is shot on a Mavic 2 Pro. Uh, we're going to be using the auto tracker inside of uh, Fusion 17 or the beta of uh, Resolve 17. Um, we're going to be doing a camera track. We are going to be taking a look at how we can use the point cloud to generate this mesh that can be used for uh, casting shadows onto or for cleanup. We're going to then be using the lens distortion information that we get out of the camera tracker to redistort the CG or the wireframe so it matches the uh, uh, landscape much, much, much better. And we're going to be using overscans to make sure we can fill in anything that the uh, lens distortion crops out. All right, let's get started. So the first thing that we want to do is just create a little garbage mask for these guys so we're not tracking them and I do want to have a little rectangle for the uh, horizon so we're not tracking anything in this region so let's put down an um, ellipse for these guys so we'll just make it small and put in a couple of keyframes so at the start and then over here we'll make it a little bit bigger move them down here make it a little bit bigger and bigger still and they're pretty much out of frame so I think that's pretty okay yeah let's do the uh, rectangle and uh, let's have the rectangle cut off everything right around here so let's have a look at the masks and I do want to invert them so I just want to hit Invert on the rectangle and then subtract it from the uh, from the um, uh, subtract the ellipse from it and um, let's put down a camera tracker and connect the mask input to the uh, mask input of the camera tracker. Let's hit it, preview the uh, points and uh, we'll hit bidirectional tracking. We'll adjust this a little bit. We do want to create a fair amount of points, so uh, let's hit save and track. Great, so that looks like it's going to work. Uh, in the camera tab, we are going to be changing this to a uh, user specified sensor. It's a 28 millimeter uh, lens on a uh, 0.519 inch uh, sensor, which is basically the, um, it's the Mavic Pro 2. And uh, put in the, uh, uh, the height as well. Uh, in the solve tab, we are going to auto select the seed frames. We do not want to refine the focal length because we're already defined it as the 28 mil, but we are going to be enabling the lens parameters and that's going to be calculating the lens distortion for us. Now we have 14,000 points, uh, almost 15,000 points in our track. So we do want to call a couple of them. So let's select, uh, the band tracks. So let's select 10,000 of them and we'll, uh, delete them and hit save and then we'll hit solve so that's done and that's a pretty good and accurate um, solve error so we're gonna hit save and we're gonna start exporting our scene into the fusion graph so let's do that down here we'll make a little bit of space for for ourselves and uh, what we essentially get is the camera, uh, a ground plane, and the point cloud. So let's have a look at the uh, the data that we actually get from this. So you can see here, this is the camera with the uh, image back plane. And then we have a ground plane over here, which we actually just going to delete. And then we have the point cloud. So let's just reduce the uh, size of the points. And let's have a look through the camera. We can reduce them still. That looks like it's working pretty well. You can just ignore the uh, the uh, uh, 3D grid inside of Fusion and just focus on the points because what we're going to be doing now is 
actually taking the point cloud and turning them into a, uh, a plane that we can use for occlusions and shadow casting and, and project stuff on. So for that to work, we're going to actually be doing some tricks where we will be taking the position of the points for each one of the uh, um, point cloud points and basically turning them into an image where each color of them will represent their spatial location in, in 3D. So if that sounds confusing, then just follow along and we'll do a custom vertex 3D. And in the custom vertex, we are going to be changing the vertex colors to the position of the, uh, the points. So basically they'll be colored based on their position. And uh, we might want to enable make renderable and you can see they're just turned into green and blue. And um, one more thing that we need to do is create a UV map on them so we can actually render them to an image or rather an image plane. So we'll just do a planar in Y fit and that'll create the UV position here. And if we now put down a render 3D and set it to something like 1024 by 1024. And uh, we'll use the UV render. You can see the points are now appearing and they kind of look like they're splattered um, on the image, which is which is fine. We're just going to reduce the size a little bit. And uh, what we basically have now is a position pass that we can use to drive the displacement of an image plane. So let's put down an image plane and a displace 3D. And we'll connect the output of this image into the input of the displace node. So if we look at the um, the uh, image plane here, it's pretty low resolution. So let's put it up to something like 128. And we need to set the displacement to use the RGB at absolute values. So if we now connect the output of this with the output of the camera and we look through the camera we basically have a, a piece of geometry that aligns with the uh, uh, with the point cloud and the tracked camera but it's creating all these weird streaks and that's basically because the position here is going to black and these are positioned in 3d space so the little area in between where there's some aliasing will actually try to interpolate the precision data from that to black which is basically at the origin so we need to get rid of the transparency and basically fill it with the color of the points and there's a really good node called clean plate which lets us do that and we connect it to the renderer and what we can do is switch it to ranges hit grow edges and fill and that'll basically oh that'll basically uh create this map and if we plug this one in now it'll basically create something that actually uh, will align with the geometry much much better so if we put down an override node and we set the override to wireframe then we can see the uh, the shape of the geometry that we just created So that's a pretty cool trick to uh, to create um, geometry that lines up pretty well. Uh, but there's a, there's a couple of issues. So let, let's put down a scan on um, a render node and set it to render out the uh, the uh, the image at the right resolution. And, and let's have a look at this area down here especially at the beginning, you can see that things are not exactly lining up. They're still sliding. That's because we're not taking lens distortion into account. So if you want this stuff to match 100%, you have to use lens distortion. And luckily in Fusion, that's quite easy. So in our camera, I'm just going to disable the, um, the image plane. So we're not rendering the image plane. And I'm going to put down a merge and put the... Um, uh, original media, the original uh, source plate into the image so we can see what it looks like once it's actually comped. 
so it'll, it'll be the same. But what we want to do is distort the CG, distort the uh, fusion render so that it matches the lens profile of the, uh, the uh, um, Mavic Pro. So we put down a lens distortion node and in order to find the values that we need, the camera tracker has already done that for us. So if we go back to the camera tracker and we go to the solve panel and we have a look at this lens division model K1, it's set to 0, 1, 0, 7. And that's the magic value that we need. So we're going to set the lens distortion to distort, set the lens model uh, distortion to 0 0.107. And what you'll immediately see is that everything snaps into place. So if we play play this back now, you can see that we're getting a much, much tighter fit for all the, uh, the geometries that we have. Now, there's, there's one issue that you're probably seeing, and that's the, because of the lens distortion, we're now cropping into the image so that we're not getting um, the, the geometry that's outside of the camera frustrum. And there's a couple of ways to fix this. One of them is to render at a slightly higher resolution with a slightly wider focal length. But Fusion's built-in renderer actually has support for it through overscans. And you can use the domain overscan to just fill out the missing pieces. So that'll basically just do the same thing as changing the focal length and the size of the image. So that concludes this video where we've done a camera track and we use the point clouds to generate a mesh that we can use for reprojections or shadow casting or, or shadow uh, casting shadows on. We've used the lens distortion to reintroduce the distortion to our CG render so it's matching the plate much, much better. And we've taken a look at the overscan function to just bring some of the images back. So that concludes the uh, first of uh, potentially a couple of other videos that I might wanna do on tracking and how to use camera data for uh, cleanups or for creating effects where you might want to remove or add stuff to a scene based on these techniques.